Recently, Sam Gilda, cart provider extraordinaire, came and talked to a group of A to Z participants about his work as a cart provider and what he enjoys and loves about it. Let's hop on in and hear what he has to say. When you do uh, do freelance, you are pretty uh, flexible. Like I start my semester pretty um, pretty blank. It's a blank slate. And then uh, all the schools will contact me. Hey, can you cover this math class on a Monday and Wednesday from this time to this time? And I go, sure. And then I block it out. And then I have four other places I work that I just fill out my schedule with. And every six months, no complacency. I reset new classes, new instructors, new everything. So that's kind of the one thing about court that would, um, I want to uh, do it more often, but it, it, it is tough going to the same place every day, same people. So that's the great thing about CART is I'm going from sometimes in Pittsburgh to Concord, to San Francisco, to Oakland, testing out her briefs. <laughs> <laughs> And you do meet a lot of different people. I, I, like I said, I've met the ex-Oakland police chief. He is actually an instructor at DBC. That's a great connection to have if you into criminal justice and stuff like that. But since you guys are pretty new, I don't want to say things over your head. Um, when it comes to the freedom and like the, the sense of feeling worth, like you have a career that you choose what you get paid a lot. Like I've had schools go, what do you charge? And I say a number and I've never heard them say anything back. And a lot of the times, dang, did I just <laughs> lowball myself? <laughs> you know, you think you think twice. I the best thing about having a career, as you guys would know, how how demeaning is it sometimes when you're at your job and you know that anyone could replace you and they treat you as such, you know, like, oh, don't argue or I'll get the next person to do your job. In our case, we're not, we don't just fall out of trees, you know, like <laughs> there's not a lot of people that write 225 words a minute accurately. So that's the best part is you, you can stand up for yourself in certain situations and be like, no, no, thank you. Because there's so much other work that I could take, I'll be fine. And they usually call back, <laughs> she'll tell you. But just to show a little of um, what I pack in here, it's kind of like, I'm probably gonna look like the bald Mary Poppins. In row two. <laughs> like I have a tripod, here's a tablet. And uh, this is kind of how the student would sit. They would have like a tablet on their desk like that. And whatever she'd, she'd write, kind of like up here, would come out in a, a more like presentable way. It would literally look just like a black screen of text. And um, also I got like battery power things, keep tablets up, another tablet. <laughs> you, some people have bad eyes, you gotta give them bigger tablets. Um, I usually do uh, Amazon ones because they're, they're cheap and easy. Uh, my writer, as you'll see, is the weirdest thing about what I use. Even Laura has trouble on this writer. It's not very um, traditional. Uh, basically, as you just tap it, it would register a case. So it is good for your hands in the long run, but it is very different. It's like trying to learn those split keyboards that are funky, you know? And uh, what are some questions that you guys might have for the for CART, the differences? In it? Um, the being like right now the difference in the keyboard if it's the same that what we have here it, this is like the outlier basically this is like the crazy one but it, it is the same structure it's the same basically. it's just kind of like some are a little bigger but it's the same layout they just made these a little bigger for your vowels so good for me because i i don't have woman hands i have guy hands <laughs> so that helps me a bit um but if you learn on one of these, you can write on almost anything. But if you want to, you can pass around and touch them. They're, they're like silicon case. They're really soft. You could breathe on it pretty hard and it would, uh, if you blew on it, it would register. 
Did you learn on one of those? No, no, I did not. I learned so on. Hard to it was. It took me for that particular one. We'll, we'll, we won't stick on it too much, but yeah, that one took me probably a good week, two weeks, just to to feel confident. Like I kind of took a step back and then built my speed back up. Mm -hmm. But once you, that's what any rider. Whenever you go, it's like a car. You know, it, there's like that week where the seat feels weird and uh, the. The visor doesn't go the way I like, but you get used to it. Um, when it comes to cart, though, the one thing I do want to like tell you guys is when it comes to your flexibility, it is a, a freedom that you take for granted and you have to remind yourself how beautiful it is because you'll be driving in your car, going to a job, and you'll remember when you worked at Baskin Robbins or whatever and you were sitting there serving up people all day and getting yelled at that wow i don't have a a real boss i go i report to the disability department that is with each school and that is who hires me they basically say here is your schedule go out and work and i will go to the job meet the student would be there i would set up everything hand them the tablet and I could just sit in the back of the room, away from them. It's very discreet. They've no one even knows I'm there. And um, you just write everything. And it comes out on the tablet. And then after the class is over, I just send a pretty rough like transcript to the email. So they have verbatim notes. Uh, the good thing about it is it's not as pressure like her job, like every period, comma, could put someone in jail if it's wrong. <laughs> you know, you, you, things can be bad. But that's a pressure that you have to be okay with. And uh, court court is great though. It is very rewarding. As she, criminal justice, when I take the criminal justice classes, I feel like alive. When it's biology, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and the, the, the other thing about CART is you, you're not going to hear anything similar often besides the subject. So you've probably heard bad and cat and all these things. Later, you'll start hearing uh, things called jury charges and two people talking as a Q&A. Um, in a scholastic setting, it's, it's pretty dense. So things can sound faster than they actually are. But if you can do that, everything is easy. Like if I go to court, it's a piece of cake because it's the same things they say all the time you'll down the road develop literally shortcuts like let's have her show off <laughs> super califragilistic <laughs> she's, she's gangster enough to do that you know that looks like a crazy thing to write but why don't you go like let's show it we were just she <laughs> just wrote it in one stroke yeah she talked about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, they, I told them. I said, people test you with this word. Oh, yeah. But every time I was in school, like you guys, in speed building, I would say, hey, here's a good brief for this. Wouldn't that people would just look at me like, when the hell are you going to use that? My first year on the job, I wrote that word nine times uh, in the same class. And I thought he was messing with me. <laughs> Thank God I showed off in school and made something for it. So it's... The student doesn't know that it took me one or two strokes. They just go, wow, this guy is great. This person's great. <laughs> and that's what, another thing when it comes to cart and captioning, technology is your best friend. Uh, you are going to learn on pretty old school writers to some standards, um, but um, it all translates. You just have to um, learn the software a bit, and it's kind of like a safety net. Like sometimes your fingers do things and you're trying to teach them to do something else and it's hard, but you can tell your software, I sometimes drop the R. So can you see if I meant this and it'll put it out. And a lot of the times if you tweak it a certain way, it'll, it'll save your butt. And the student knows no different besides if the word is right. <laughs> so as long as you do your job and it goes out, that's all that matters. Uh, but when you're in the class, you just sit and you're just a part of the class. You just write along and um, you just get to enjoy school again in a weird way where you don't feel like you're, you're dumping $1,000, $10,000 to learn something. They're paying you to be there. And 
I say bye to the students. A lot of my students see me around the campus and get pretty upset that I'm not the captioner a certain semester because like, oh, wish we had you. It'll be like a guy student. He's like, eh, it's different when it's a middle-aged girl. <laughs> She's still cool though. <laughs> but it's it's like a bro moment. I don't get that often. So. <laughs> um, what would you be looking for? You particularly, what was your name again? Chelsea. Chelsea. When you're looking for freedom in the workplace, what do you see as like freedom? Well, if you're saying how you are flexible with your schedule, you can kind of pick where where you want to work, when you want to work, um, and how you said that you don't have someone you really have to uh, answer to, the yeah. manager or supervisor. They, they, unless you, and the only time you hear from them, it's a bad thing. So right. I've never had to, but yeah, um, yeah, no, it is it is a cool feeling to not feel like you have a supervisor running down your neck and. You're always under a microscope. If I actually have been hired a couple of jobs through email. They never even met me. They just went off the strength of my, my uh, resume after I built it up at San Jose State, and then I just went from there. So you, that's how needed you are, that people will hire you sight unseen. They don't even know what you look like. Nothing. I have a question. I have two questions. Yeah. Um, one was, did you start doing this right after you finished your testing? For so, I, your cart? yeah, and then this, do you want me to take that and then do the second or yeah. do both? Okay. <laughs> Pressure here. No, but um, I did it because um, I got married and I needed to make money. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what, this is something I want to try. Uh, I always wanted to be a captioner just because, especially when you do the TV captions, which she does sometimes, she, she is a gangster. I'm not going to, she can go like 300 words per minute. She is insane. And like accurately. She, didn't she used to do a Canadian TV station? Yeah. And she would ask me, do you know anything about basketball and baseball? I need briefs. Thank you. And um, you could do that from home. I could just sit in my boxers working. No one would know. They don't care. <laughs> Hope she was that. <laughs> yeah, no, and um you do, like I said, you you know, you feel a self of worth that you've never felt in your life. Where people will say, "This is what we pay," and you'll go, "Gonna need like ten dollars an hour more." I don't, I can't. It's all the way in San Francisco, and they should go, "Sure thing, we'll get back to you in twenty minutes." And then I get a call, "Sure." Never had anyone say no. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> so, and uh, what was your second question? Sorry. So, so did you? start working right after you I just went out and just worked yeah. yeah I just I was in school really long I was one of those um I could do it part-time mm -hmm. and it took me many years but do not take it that lightly it is you have to knuckle down and just work mm -hmm. just you, you don't expect a, a baseball player to just be a major league pitcher he's got to work in the minors and do all kinds of stuff and maybe he gets called up and he's good enough so you have to just Grind you grind it out like you there's so much need out there you, you'll work right away it's not like the real estate market where you spend all this time studying for a test and then the market crashed or mm -hmm. you go to silicon valley like in 2005 or something and there was nothing there that's why i actually chose this career i was in high school i was like a, a junior and uh, the dean of my school came and she came to my keyboarding class and just asked who writes 30 words a minute who writes 50 words a minute. And after a while, I was like the only one that was around 80. Because I played a lot of video games and was on the computer. And she said, you can do it. She said, I was a cheerleader and I can do it. You can do it. And I said, all right, I guess that's a good endorsement. <laughs> I'll try it out. <laughs> and I, I, I had fun with it. I treated it like a game. Just like, how do I beat this level? What do I do? And these lessons are going to feel like you're playing Super Mario or something. <laughs> you're going to be losing a lot and it, you learn to accept that. And then you, you're actually a better person when you get through this program because like nothing will bug you, I'm telling you. <laughs> Whenever someone gives you any little adversity, you're like, ugh, you know how many things I had to learn and to practice that? Ugh, this is nothing. And uh, you, you're gonna be swamped with work. You will be exhausted to say, tell them no, I. I I need to take a break. So my second question kind of goes with that. It was, how do you find jobs like that? I never see them. See, the cart jobs, yeah, because they're 
people try to get weird with those jobs. They don't want to like tell everyone about them. I don't know why, but you just uh, you don't see them often because who do you know writes two hundred words per minute? Mm-hmm. It's super weird. It's a weird <laughs> skill to have, <laughs> yeah. but it's a very important one. So when you just you go to the colleges and you, I can't remember was it Bush Senior passed the Disability Act or somewhat one of the Bushes Senior or Junior I don't know. Mm-hmm. He passed a disability act where at, at a school, especially at a college, there has to be a service provided for anyone with any disability. So to kind of get you on equal level playing ground. And not everyone does sign language. Mm-hmm. So we're basically the other option. And um, they love it. So, I will say, though, sorry to interrupt, but there are uh, captioning companies and cart companies that you sign up with and um, either as an employee or as oh, an yeah. independent contractor. And then they give you work. So you don't have, you can look for your own work or you can yeah. sign up with all these companies. And then they say, we have this job, this job, which ones do you want? Yeah. So I have, out of my five jobs, one of them is like that. I have one, it's, it's a company called Quick Caption. They're built, based out of Riverside. And they just say, hey, that's the job I just came from. We have a high school in Antioch, blah, blah, blah. Can you cover it? Sure. So I'm there Wednesday, Thursday morning, and Fridays. And that you will have people like that that will find you work. You, but you do, it's a hustle. It's when you're freelance, especially as a cart provider, you have to have it in you to go out there and get your work because they're not going to come knocking on the door for you if they don't know you exist. How long have you been in the field? About three years. Three years? Yeah. Did you start with cart or did you? I went straight to cart. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was, um, I was kind of like that. Like I said, I was that guy that was in school way too long. So I was in the cocoon too long. I was like, I gotta fly. <laughs> like, you're good. She would tell me she was probably one of the first people to give me that confidence. Like she's like, you are way better than you think you are. You know that, right? You're like you're good enough to go out and work. Like get out of school, get done. What's wrong with you? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had test anxiety. A lot of people do, but yeah, no, you, you, it's, it's harder. Are you in school here? Uh. Sort of. Sort of? <laughs> I had surgery on our wrist recently, so I'm getting back in it. Okay. Yeah. It's going to take a bit to get the muscle in your back. Yep. Yeah. Where were, where were you at? 120. 120? Okay. So you're, you're in it. In it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was pretty I would it. say do, do not let anyone tell you not to learn software. Yeah. Um, I would do it now. Yeah, I know. All they the did not preach now, that yeah. when I was in school. They were like, ah, you worry about it when you're out of school. It was a very antiquated thinking. Yeah. Don't let the technology scare you. It, it's what separates you. Because even if you go into the court, the judges will ask you, are you real time? And they will tell you, like, it's not required to them, but to them it is. They will be like, I don't want. You, or they'll give you six months to learn it <clears throat> or get proficient at it. Uh, anyone else have any questions? How did you transition from school to doing CART? It, it's it's basically getting used to natural speech is the hardest thing because when you're in school it's always 120 words per minute or 140 or 60 it's all like no one talks like that you know it, it's but it's there for a reason when you you got to just get used to like the ups and downs and pauses so, because you, you'll get in a school and you'll start realizing when you're at her level you get into like a rhythm it's like a you're playing Guitar Hero or something. You're just doing like a rhythm game. And when you get in the real world, it is a little jarring at first. But it, you start realizing, wow, people are very easier to write than what I'm used to. And it's kind of like, you never been to the, you go to the gym and you work out all the time and then you go to lift that box that used to scare you. And, oh, it's nothing. <laughs> it's like that. You will literally, they train you to have that fifth gear. So that when the person decides to go 240 and go nuts, you can do it. You won't be comfortable, but you'll be able to sustain it for a while. And in school, they, they make you do 200 words per minute for like 10 minutes. It sounds nuts now, but I, an uh, average day, like on my Monday and Tuesdays, I will work from about 8.50 in the morning to about 6 or 9 in the evening with maybe the only break driving from each school. So I will go to Antioch. This is going to be good for your brace. <laughs> go to Antioch. And then I would drive to Pleasant Hill and then go to San Francisco and then drive back home to where I live in Fairfield. 
which is, so I sometimes will go 150, 60 miles in a day. But when that paycheck comes, <laughs> it is super worth it. <laughs> it's really okay, this is too personal, but what's your annual income approximately? Per year? Per year. Um, I can definitely, because you gotta remember, like, third year for me, this is like my hitting my stride year. Yeah. I will for sure eclipse 100K this year. That's awesome. I think for sure. Yeah. I didn't work um, much in the summer, which does happen. When you get to the summer and the schools are closed for the most part, you're basically off for two months. Mm-hmm. I did take some work this summer, whatever I could get. It was like 14 hours a week. But it was still a couple of grand, so I'll take it. Um, without that, I, I made 80 yeah. before, without working two months. Two and a half, maybe almost three, I think. So who do you know makes eighty thousand and they didn't work for two months in the year? <laughs> it's a great thing. Work home, right? Because you're not editing it, transcripts or anything. You're just live card. Well, yeah. So that's that's a good point. I've almost forgot about that. Our job is almost the flip side of court. Court is in depositions. You'll go work for maybe two hours, three hours, but then you're at home pulling the transcripts for hours. So it depends what you like. If you have kids. That's cool to just most of the work's at home. Me as a guy, I need an excuse to be out of the house. So I want to be always doing on-site captioning because it keeps me out of the house. And those dishes that I put off, my wife will eventually do them. I didn't want to do them that day. <laughs> I know it's stupid thinking, but it works for me. And I, I love, you'll love to work. You will literally just want to work all day. She, she told me yesterday it's the thing that keeps her most energized. <laughs> It does for me too, but the driving will, will, it's just the barrier. It is what it is, but it doesn't deter me. Like I drive sometimes 500 to 700 miles a week on top of a 50, 60 hour work week. But I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to buy a house a lot sooner than most people think. And uh, it's a good feeling to not worry about like your bills and things. They'll be taken care of. You just work hard really focus on your theory and the theory that she's doing with you guys is way better than what I learned. I had to take two years to fix the theory I learned because I did not, I, it was not good for me. Um, but I, I'm just talking too much. I'm sorry. That's weird. What's we doing? Did yeah. <laughs> they teach you the software in class? No, see, in my school, they didn't. And they had a class a little bit that would teach you a little bit of the rules, but I've learned more from her than I ever did at my school, but I was I was the outlier. I was pretty tech savvy, and not I understand not a lot of people are. And so, they, so if you're not tech savvy, they do they do teach it in schools to different depending on what school different degrees are no or not or you know but, not apply. But if the school doesn't, there is a ton of online resources yeah, and you, classes you can take online. You yeah. had your own, didn't you? Yeah, you will, you'll be able to do it. Um, so able. you get your certificate. But then before you'd even work in like a courtroom, you still need that. No, you get the software while you're in school. So oh. so the software will be... This is the software. Yeah, so this, she uses the same as me, but she goes like a cute teal. I go black with <laughs> white characters. Um, but the and software... that's what you can fix to like say, okay, if I like super califragilis, whatever, she can <laughs> yeah. tell it that that's... So here, open your dictionary So file. for example... Before I do that, yeah. that yellow means I didn't stroke it right. That's I, the safety I, net I talked about. I made a misstroke. I said, um, I just did this one on purpose, so it doesn't yeah. really, it's not the best example because it's, it went through and said this, you can see the stroke, this is my steno stroke on the right. I just hit something crazy so that it would come up yellow. And it went through my dictionary and said, oh, it looks like she's trying to write the word interaction. Let's put interaction there. But it will be things like... Um, do something where you just like leave it like a little word, like a little letter out. So, um, so yeah. So for example, this is how I write was it W A E U D Z. I'm gonna seal that. And then, <laughs> I, <laughs> she and then I wrote. See how I kind of mistro- show them the mistro- she, I put a P, the P instead of just. And they, it went through and said, "Oh, it looks like she's trying to write was it." And there's a setting and option that you can put. These are letters that I tend to mm-hmm. drag. Right. Like she did, she dragged one. And then they'll be, like, let's say she left out the Z. They will be like a little bank that you could put, eh, I tend to leave out the Z. 
So what it kind of does, it sees that it's not in your dictionary file, and we'll show you what that is. And it'll, you basically have a file that you put in all these entries. Not all by hand, but it will give you like a file that has like thousands of things in it. You'll kind of edit it. Right. But it, she's put, when she writes W long A D Z, put out, like here, scroll. You guys catch it, sorry. Catch scroll. that long A, <laughs> yeah. long A. They just learn here, long highlight long. this one real quick, Laura. It'll, it will, it'll say M, that means her main dictionary, was it. So it knows when you write this, output that. So you have a file that is like, you back that up every way you can. And it it's is, only specific to you. Yeah, exactly. Each person. So um, let's say we both learn magnum steno theory. You can get a file that is magnum steno theory and it will cover most of your bases as long as you follow what you do. But as she, she's told you, and a lot of reporters might tell you, you do things your own way eventually. Like I've never even seen that brief, but I do hear, it? yeah, I've, that, I've never seen it written that way. So I might not like the way she writes it, but mm -hmm. I say, you know what? I should be briefing that. I'll find something that's comfortable for my fingers, mm -hmm. and I can right, think so of that. So you do personalize it yourself. Oh, you have okay. a little flair. We've been writing babe. So there's a babe in my dictionary and babes. So do you recognize this? No, P, W, A, long, the long A, and the B. So that's the, the word goes into your steno to English dictionary. And you write it, and it goes in, and then you tra it translates it to English. Yeah. So back in the days, you used to get it off the paper, <laughs> like and you used it. to sit there, and you used to have to go, babble. And one by one. So it didn't get rid of someone's job. It just made our job way easier. Ugh, easier. <laughs> because it, you don't get paid by the hour in court in certain things. They don't care how long you spend at home. They just care about a transcript. So if it took you five hours and it took her 15 hours, who's getting paid more? Because she can go take another job while she's stuck at home doing her, her other transcript that she's still doing. But in CART, it's more work up front and a little less work at home. So that is nice for me. I go home, I just kind of go through the transcript a little bit and then I email it out to the student and I'm free. But I am at my sites a lot longer than, if you worked yesterday, it was like, you, I went to a, tra um, a depot for three hours, but what is your average when you go home? Or like a three hour thing, maybe five? Well, to prepare hours. a three hour transcript, depends on how well you write. If you write cleanly, it's super hard. easier. <laughs> but if, if it's hard and you're not writing very well, you have to actually. So I, would, I always tell people for a three hour deposition, it would, it would take at least three hours to prepare it, maybe more, depending on how. If and you write you're going to well prepare enough. a lot as a captioner because it has to come out as you write it. In court, it's okay if it doesn't all the way when you write it, as long as the final transcript is accurate. Um, so yes, there is a little more pressure to perform on the spot, but it is nice that like you're not feel like you're gonna lose your license or something because someone got a trial appeal because you made a mistake on the transcript. Uh, but that's why you hire proofreaders, There's you'll have, enough money to do so. Here's 50 bucks. Make sure I don't make a mistake that I miss. Um, don't be scared of that. You know, I see your face. It is a little off-putting at first, but nothing that is worth it is easy. No one's going to give you an easy job that pays well. It's going to be tough, but how it's such a nice feeling that you go to work and what you do is just like breathing. It gets to a point where it's literally like breathing. You ever drive in your car and you're thinking about 100 things and then you park there like, I'm already here? How the hell did I get here? <laughs> I swear you will get to a point where you'll be writing everything that's said and you're thinking about, what do I need for dinner tonight? <laughs> and then you get terrified and you go, oh my God, did I miss it? And you look at your screen and everything's there and you, your mind can do crazy things. Don't, don't. I saw you hesitating a lot back there because you, you're worried about getting it right. Just try to get the muscle memory down. Don't if you mess it up, it's cool. Just try to to set it right and hit it hit it there. Don't worry about your speed right now. It's all about accuracy. Once you get that muscle memory down, then you drive it into fifth gear and you do what she does and you just build speed and build speed. But the way that she writes is she's. And she's an anomaly when it comes to some people. She likes to write legal stuff and all that stuff, but she writes like a capture because she is a capture too. 
when you write like a captioner in the legal setting, it is a ton of less work for you because when you go to your transcript, the right there, there, or there, you can pick whatever <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, like the, the, you know, things like that, if you do them right on the spot, it's less work for you later. And captioning, it has to be, right? Because the student will know what's going on. But it's a, it's a trip. It's really, you're going to sit there and, and love what you do every day because you, you feel free. Uh, and then after six months, I freak out if I'm going to have enough work again, but it always works out every time. And I'm going to jump in on that because after 36 years, um, there's always work. There's always, always work. And I oh, remember yeah. that first couple of years too. It's like, if I don't take everything, yes, yes, I'll drive 12,000 miles. Yes, I want every job I can get. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's like that. It's not like that. You can say no, and you can work two days a week. When my kids were little, I worked one day a week. That was it, and I still brought in a nice little chunk. Yeah, a lot more so, than you will four mm -hmm. hours a yeah, week somewhere. Yeah, working at McDonald's or, yeah, and, or and whatever. Yeah, and everyone's yelling at you because you're French fries or something. <laughs> <It's soggy. laughs> you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a... That's a very underrated feeling, and I didn't know how I was going to react when I started my career. I was like, am I going to, like, lose my mind? Is it going to be too much for me or is it going to be a letdown and it wasn't what I thought it was? It is. It's a funky feeling. <laughs> like you, you get it and it doesn't feel the way you thought, but then you just go, man, I'm not worried about money. Like I just, I have enough and I'm trying to, if I want to make more, I go make more because I want to buy a house. And like you said, if, you know, if I was pregnant and having kids, I was like, you know, I'll take couple of days off and just work one class a week or two and you you could still make man it i think it's just one of the jobs i only do a class or two for them they give me almost three grand a month just for one of them <laughs> so some people will work 40 hours a week for four grand you know something like that and that's a underrated feeling where you could just do what you do take care of your your family and and not worry about it and you're going to be I don't know if you can handle it. Are you going to be able to work 50, 60 hours a week if you had to? But, but if it's something you love, yeah. it, you're going to just get like this, give it to me. You're going <laughs> to be like the number munch. You're just eating it all. You're going to want to eat. And um, are you guys all from the Sacramento area? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Where are you from? Um, from SoCal. You're from SoCal? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, there's a ton of reporters out there too. They, that the company I work for is in Riverside, and they, they always try to get me to go down and make a trip. Just yeah. work all over. Oh over. yeah, and I, I will do that. I told my wife, I was like, "You want to go to Disneyland?" <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, "Well, I'll stop by Cal State Northridge <laughs> and cover this class for them. It'll pay for half of the trip, if not <laughs> most of it." <laughs> yeah, and that's a cool feeling, you know. And she. You used to like remote caption, like I said, for Canada and stuff. <laughs> you could, if you really like remote stuff, I haven't dabbled it in, in it a lot, much, but you could live wherever as long as your internet connection is nice and you have a company that takes care of you and gives you good jobs. You could, you could like do all kinds of stuff. You could live in the middle of nowhere where your yeah. rent's nothing and make, like you could live in the Bay Area. And that's a, that's a, crazy thing too I've been thinking about it but I like it here so mm -hmm. what do you got what are your ambitions when you guys get through this because you're going to get through it right and you're going to want to fail I mean you're going to want to quit a bunch but don't I am telling well, this, this, you this is not worth it this is um, to decide if I actually want to go to quarter quarter school I'll go <laughs> um, it's one of the hardest things I ever did but it is the most rewarding like I go to work and I just like feel like I'm breathing. Mm -hmm. It's tiring because you get a little tired doing that all day, but you get done and you're just like, all right. Mm -hmm. No one berated me. I didn't get yelled at. I didn't, yeah, my my worst day is, oh, God, I was a little inaccurate today. Mm -hmm. What's your worst day at work? Yeah. Yeah, what's your worst day at work? Uh, kid lit, lit a trash can on fire. That's a lot yeah. worse. Than like, what's your worst day at work? <laughs> I'm junior. Oh, are you junior? Okay. What's your worst day at school? Gosh, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm well, I hope you don't find out. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? What's your worst day at work? Uh, well, I'm in school and I'm a stay-at-home mom. So 
my kids hating me. Yeah. They're gonna they're, they're gonna love you. I'm there. They, just give them a chance. They're cool. <laughs> kids are kids are a trip. What's your what's your worst day? Like? My worst day? I've never had a worst day in court reporting. Oh, your support time. reporter? Okay. She's one of the teachers from upstairs. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, like the worst day at work is like, ha, ah, track my damn L. And you're, <laughs> and you're just like hard on yourself. You're going to do that a lot. You'll be a little hard on yourself. But it's like anyone ever play sports? Yeah, it's the same thing. You just, I want to be able to shoot the ball better or, or hit the ball better. It's just, you got to, it's the repetition. You have to do something like a thousand times until it's natural and then do it over again. And then when you notice that, there's a better way to do it. You're going to do that a thousand times to do it the other way. But it's better than trash cans getting lit and babies throwing up on you and high school and, and I don't remember what your worst people. Is. Just people in general. <laughs> and that's a cool thing. If you don't like people, you will see people that you don't need to talk to. Exactly. And you are paid not to do so. You just listen and hang out and enjoy the scenery and learn and and express yourself you literally just feel like you're doing a performance mm -hmm. and it's not often but they will come up to you once in a while and be like geez you are insane how did you get super califragilistic that's <laughs> <Yalidocious?" laughs> because she's gangster enough she can do it <laughs> she prepared and most people won't know what it took you to do that but all it took was for her to put it in her dictionary and remember it they think you took 20 strokes to do it. That doesn't matter. <laughs> Let them be impressed because you took the time to prepare. And when, even if you decide cart or if you decide court, I always suggest writing like a captioner because when you do get into court, it's a lot less work when you get home. And it, unless you need a reason to be away from the kids, then you lock the door and say, these transcripts are longer than I thought, honey. <laughs> I need to get down on these. <laughs> You take care of the kids. I got it. <laughs> and um, I'm pretty talked out on that. I just, I don't, I don't, because I forget you guys are so new. Uh, in high school, see, I was, a, you're a junior, you said? Yeah. I was a junior when I first heard about it, and I didn't think it would take me here. Like, now I'm talking to a junior. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't think it's just this thing that I'll try out. Like, I would say, really, really see if this is for you. And, and go 100% on it because you're never going to regret it. If you're interested in learning more about becoming a CART provider, head on over to learntocaption.com.